Hey students, today we will be doing May June two thousand twenty four paper six variant two. This is paper six. Let's start it. When the mixture of calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride is heated, ammonia gas is made. So ammonia gas is released. Whenever we react any hydroxide, any alkali with any ammonium salt, it gives a salt, water, and ammonia gas. Ammonia gas is soluble in water and it's toxic. Ammonia gas reacts with hot copper oxide to make nitrogen. This is the reaction. Ammonia plus copper oxide gives copper plus water plus nitrogen gas. Student makes nitrogen using the apparatus shown. So in this apparatus, you have this boiling tube in which there is a mixture of calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. It is giving us the solution. And in this solution, this from this solution, a gas is produced from this mixture. A gas is produced and this gas is passed over copper oxide, which is obviously the gas is ammonia. And it is passed over copper oxide and it is giving us nitrogen gas. So both these equations are combined in this picture. The question is, name the items of apparatus labeled A and B. Now, apparatus A is boiling tube and apparatus B is measuring cylinder. So, we'll write apparatus A is boiling tube and apparatus B is measuring cylinder. Next question, the apparatus needs to be heated in two, piece, in two places. On figure 1.1, draw arrows in two places to show where the apparatus should be heated. So we have to make the arrows where the apparatus should be heated. So one of the arrows should be here because the mixture should be heated to give ammonia gas. Here it is formed. And the next arrow will be on copper oxide. During the reaction, a colorless liquid collects at the point marked X, such as the identity of the colorless liquid. Now, it's very easy. Here, you can see that in the first reaction, calcium chloride, water, and ammonia is prepared. Now, this liquid, which is marked S, is water. So, we'll write over here that the colorless liquid is water. Some of the ammonia gas passes over the copper oxide without reacting. Suggest why none of this ammonia gas is collected in the item of apparatus labeled P. They are saying in the question that some of the ammonia is just passed through copper oxide without reacting with it. So why ammonia gas is not collected in this measuring cylinder along with nitrogen gas. The reason for this is already written in the question. It's written that ammonia gas is soluble in water. This apparatus or this way of collecting gas cannot be used for any gas which is soluble in water. So ammonia gas will be will dissolve in water and hence it won't be collected in the measuring cylinder. So we'll write over here that Ammonia gas is soluble in water. A student does not collect the first few bubbles of the gas, just why the first few bubbles of the gas are not collected. In this type of question, in the end, in this, type, this type of question is mostly asked when we have the apparatus like this. Means when we are collecting any gas in a water bath, so why don't we collect the first few bubbles of the gas? Because the first few bubbles are always the air which is present already inside the, inside the delivery tube. So the nitrogen gas which comes, which enters into the delivery tube, it pushes the air and then nitrogen starts collecting. So first the air bubbles come out. So we don't collect the nitro, uh, we don't collect the first few bubbles because they are, because they are here. It is air. 
explain why this experiment should not be carried out in a should be carried out in a fume cupboard very easy question because ammonia is toxic or you can also write that ammonia is poisonous that's why question number 2 a student investigates the reaction between aqueous aluminum aluminum chloride and two aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide solution f and solution g so we have two types of sodium hydroxide f and g so might be one is more concentrated than the other let's see what the question is and we are reacting both of them with aqueous aluminum chloride aluminum chloride formula is alcl3 Experiment student does three experiments. In experiment one, rinse a beer with distilled water and then with aqueous aluminum chloride. Rinse the conical flask with the distilled water. Fill the beer with aqueous aluminum chloride. Run some of the aqueous aluminum chloride out of the beer so that the level of the aqueous aluminum chloride is on the beer scale. Record the initial beer reading. Use the measuring cylinder to pour 25 centimeter cube of solution F. Stand the conical flask on the black or dark colored sheet of paper. Slowly add aqueous aluminum chloride from the puree to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the mixture of the conical flask just starts to become cloudy. Means first it is a colorless solution and after the reaction it starts becoming cloudy. Record the final reading of the puree. Then in experiment two, we are doing the same thing instead of solution F, we are using solution G now. Another, the other sodium hydroxide. And in experiment 3, refill the butyl with aqueous aluminum chloride again. There is the same thing, but in this experiment also, we are using solution G, 25 centimeter cube of solution G. But this time, we are adding 5 drops of thymophylline indicator into the conical flask. In sodium hydroxide, which is solution G, we are adding few drops of thymophylline. Stand the conical flask on a white tile. Slowly add aqueous aluminum chloride from the buret to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the thymophylline indicator changes color. Record the final buret reading. Use the buret diagrams in figure in these two, three figures to record the readings of experiment 1, 2, and 3 in the table and complete the table. Okay, so this is experiment 1, experiment 2, and this is experiment 3, and we have to record their readings in this table. Now, for the experiment 1, the final buret reading will start reading from the top because this is a buret reading. We always read the buret reading from the top. So it's 14.1, 14.5, 14.6, 14 14.7. So the final reading is 14.7. And the initial reading is 1.3. So we'll write it here. That final reading is 14.7 and initial reading is 1.3. The answer, the difference between with the, the difference between final and initial reading will be 13.4. For the second experiment, it's 29.5. And the final reading will be 2.7. So we'll write here, it's 29.5 and 2.7. The difference will be 26.8. Experiment 3. We have 28.0 and this one is 0 0.4. Final reading is 28.0 and the initial reading is 0 0.4, which makes the difference between them 27.6. In experiment 3, the aqua sodium hydroxide in the conical flask is alkaline. At the end point, the mixture in the flask is no longer alkaline. State the color change seen at the end point. So we have added thymophylline in it and in alkaline solution, the thymophylline is blue in color and at the end point, it becomes neutral. So it will be colorless because thymophylline is colorless in the neutral solution. 
State why the conical flask is swirled as solution F is added in experiment 1 to mix the contents. To mix the reactant contents, that's why we swirl the flask. Suggest why the conical flask is placed on black or dark colored paper in experiment 1 and 2. Why we are placing it on the dark paper? Because as we saw written in the question that a cloudy substance is formed as a reaction finishes or as a reaction occurs when the product is formed. So if we want to see the cloudiness clearly, we will place it on the dark colored paper. So the answer will be to see the cloudiness clearly. Explain why the measuring cylinder is rinsed between experiment 1 and experiment 2. Why it is rinsed? Rinsing is to clean, to remove any solu solution F. To clean and to remove any solution F remain. Remaining. Because in experiment 1, we are using solution F and in experiment 2, we are using solution G. So we are rinsing it so that all the solution F will come out and we will be ready, our, our measuring cylinder will be ready for solution G. We want all the F to be cleaned out. Otherwise, our experiment will be unfair. Explain why the measuring cylinder does not need rinsing between experiment 2 and experiment 3. Now, it does not need rinsing because in experiment 2, we are using solution G. And in experiment 3 also, we use solution G. So, what we'll write? That we are using the same concentration, same concentration of sodium hydroxide used. Or we can write that we are using the same Solution G. In both experiments. Compare the concentration of solution F used in experiment 1 with the concentration of solution G in experiment 2. Explain your answer. Now, how we will say that if solution F is more concentrated or solution G is more concentrated? Now, See from the results, in experiment one, we are, experiment one is taking less volume of aluminum chloride to neutralize it or to, to, to form a product. And in experiment two, it is taking more amount. This means that solution G is more concentrated as it is taking more amount or it needs more volume of aluminum chloride to form the product. So the answer will be, Solution G. Solution G is more concentrated. And the reason for it is as it needs more volume of aluminum chloride. More volume of aluminum chloride needed. Next question, calculate the volume of aqueous aluminum chloride Question: Calculate the volume of alum aqueous aluminum chloride required when experiment 1 is repeated, uh, is carried out with 10 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide instead of 25 cm cube. Now, if we are using 10 cm cube of sodium hydroxide instead of 25 centimeter cube, then we have to see that how much volume is taken by 25 centimeter cube. Then we will identify that how much 10 centimeter cube will, will be used. For, for 10 centimeter cube, how much volume will be used. So for that one, we'll take the ratio that for example, if we have 25 centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide, then the volume of aluminum, or aluminum or car, or chloride which is taken is 13.4. So we'll see, we'll write that if 25 is taking, is using 13.4 centimeter cube volume, then 10 centimeter cube will take how much? 
And if we do the cross multiplication, 10 multiplied by 13.4 divided by 25, it will give us the answer 5.36 or almost 5.4 centimeter cube. Next question. In all three experiments, it is more accurate to measure the volume of the so aqua sodium hydroxide using a volumetric pipette instead of a measuring cylinder. Explain why it is not possible to use a volumetric pipette to measure the volume of aqueous aluminum chloride in these experiments. Obviously, because aluminum chloride is being used up during the experiment. We are, we are using aluminum oxide or we are seeing that how much volume of aluminum oxide is used to neutralize or to, uh, to form the product with sodium hydroxide, how much it is used. So aluminum oxide volume is continuously varying. Volume is not fixed. So that is why we cannot use pipette for it. We have to use pivot. Volume is not fixed. Or you can also write that it is variable volume. That's why we are using burette and we cannot use measuring cylinder or volumetric pipette for aluminum chloride. 